All right, this is Mr. Gillum, and today what we're going to start working on is some ratios and proportions. Uh, now, I hope that some of this is a little bit of review, um, but it should be a quick refresher, and uh, we're going to apply this to triangles and geometric shapes and things like that. But it is important to review a little bit of the ratios and proportions before we get too uh, carried away with it. Okay. Now, a ratio is basically it's a fraction. Okay? It compares um, two quantities using division. Okay, so it can be written like a fraction bar. It can be written like uh, with a colon. So three fourths is the same ratio as three to four. Okay, it's a comparison. So the div the division sign here, fraction bar, it, it means division, and the colon as well. That also means division. So um, you always put your ratios in simplest form, though. So if I had ten twelfths, or if I had ten two twelve, it would be the same as saying five to six. Okay, so the ratio would be best written as five to six or five six. Um, so just something to remember, keep in mind. Um, they reduce just like fractions. They are a comparison of two quantities, and because they're connected by division, they look exactly like a fraction. Okay. So let's take a look here at this um, basic, basic, basic just, uh, ratio problem. It says a baseball player's batting average is the ratio of the number of base hits to the number of official at bats, not including walks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start right here with this first sentence. And what it's telling me is it's a ratio between the number of base hits and we're comparing it to uh, the number of official at bats. Okay, so this is what our ratio is comparing, number of base hits to the number of official at-bats. Um, Joe Maurer had the highest batting average in Major League Baseball in 2006. Fun fact to know. If you have 521 official at-bats, so in this case the official at-bats was 521, and 181 hits, find his batting average. Okay, so there's the ratio. Now if I want to find the, the average, what I want to do is actually find the unit rate. Um, so I'm actually going to literally, I'm going to divide 181 divided by 521. 181 divided by 521. 0.347. And if you know anything about baseball, you round three decimal places to the nearest thousandth. So I'm going to say 0.347. Okay, so there's his batting average, 0.347. He led the majors in 2006 with a 347 batting average. So there you go. So that's just basic, basic understanding of how a ratio works. It compares two things, and uh, it does matter which number's on the top. Okay, the base hits compared to the number of bats is the ratio that we're looking for. So make sure you get the 181 on the top and the 521 on the bottom. Extended ratios are a little more complex. Okay, there's actually two fraction bars. Or uh, a lot of times you won't write it as a fraction with another fraction. You write it with just the colons, and it's a little more clear that way. Um, so, but it does apply the same way as far as reduced form and things like that. So if I had, say, 3 to 6 to 9, it would be better written as 1 to 2 to 3. It would be reduced that way. Or if I had 5 to 10 to 25, it would be best written as 1 to 2 to 5. And now there's actually two ratios here, sorry, three ratios here. Um, I'm comparing um, the A and the B, so there's a 1 to 2 ratio there. I'm comparing B to C, a 2 to 3 ratio, but I'm also comparing A and C together as well. So I've got three ratios. There's a relationship between three different things here. And that's going to be important to keep in mind, okay? Um, the only two obvious ones are usually just, well, I know 3 to 6, and I know 6 to 9, but there is this also, this third ratio, 3 to 9 as well. Okay, and uh, in simplest form uh, is the best way to go. Now, these extended ratios are going to be nice for geometric shapes, um, especially because uh, they have a lot of angles or a lot of sides. So for a triangle, there's three angles there. So this extended ratio is going to be important. In this case, it says the measure of the three angles in triangle ABC is 3 to 4 to 5. So find the measure of the angles. Well, 
we know things about triangles now that maybe we didn't before, but we do now. And um, I just, this is just a random triangle, and the, the measures are 3 to 4 to 5, basically is what that's saying. Okay, so whether I have an x on there or I don't have an x on there, 3 to 4 or 3x to 4x, it, I mean, it reduces the same way to 3 to 4. And so if we don't know the angles, that's why we had that little variable x on there. They're unknown. Um, but what we can do is we can sketch this little triangle here, and we can decide, okay, if the angles are 3 to 4 to 5, but we don't know what the angles are, I know that 3x plus 4x plus 5x must equal, well, all triangles have this in common. They always add up to 180 degrees. And so now I can set up um, a little equation here and solve for it because I know the ratio of the angles. Okay, so I have in this case 12x equals 180. x equals, let's see here, 180 divided by 12, 1, 6, 0, by 15. Okay, 15. So in this case, x would equal 15, but that's not the actual measure of any of the angles. One angle measure is 3 times 15. So it would be 45 degrees. One uh, angle would be 4 times 15, 60 degrees. And one angle would be 5 times 15, 75 degrees. Okay, so there you go. There you have it. Um, so these extended ratios are going to be used more for geometric shapes, things like that, solving for unknowns or finding angles, finding side lengths, things like that, of that nature. But... Um, they, they work just like a fraction, just like a, a regular ratio. You want to write them in simplest form and, and things like that. Um, a proportion is a comparison of two ratios. Okay, So it's I like to say fraction equals fraction. All right, fraction equals fraction. Now, uh, I see a lot of students get confused on this because we have fraction plus fraction. There's special rules for that. We have to have a common denominator. There's fraction minus fraction, and same thing with a common denominator. Fraction times fraction, where we multiply straight across, and you can even um, cross cancel if you'd like. Or we have fraction divided by fraction, where you have to multiply by the reciprocal. Um, so we have a lot of different rules for fractions, but now we have this new rule. It's called a proportion. It's fraction equals fraction. And as you can see, none of these first four with operations, they have operations in between the fraction bars. This final one is an e equation, meaning whatever you do on one side of the equal sign, you must also do on the other side of the equal sign. Um, so it's different. It's not an operation. Um, but there is a trick to solving them because it's fraction equals fraction. We can actually cross multiply. Okay, find the cross product. Um, and so there's there's things that are called means and extremes. Okay, means and extremes. And so if I had A compared to B and C compared to D, uh, the extremes would be A and D, the first diagonal. And the means would be the C and the B. Okay, the cross products is um, comparing the means to the extremes. Okay, AD equals BC. So... Um, we're going to do some practice here in just a second, but I'm going to show you also why a proportion can be solved through a cross product um, once we have an actual example here. So the extremes, A and D, the means, B and C, fraction equals fraction is called a proportion. It is a comparison of two ratios. Okay, fraction is just a ratio. All right. So if I want to solve these equations, specifically a special type of equation called proportion, what I need to do is cross multiply. All right. Um, so what I'm going to do is say, okay, well, I'm going to compare the extremes, 6 times 31.5 to the means, 21 times x, or x times 21. And so when I multiply these, just go ahead and grab the calculator. One eighty nine equals twenty one x. Divide by twenty one, x equals nine. Okay, and so and it's just that simple. However, I do want to show you why the cross product um, is used to solve proportions. And remember, the proportion is just a fancy word for an equation that is a fraction equals fraction. If I took that same exact problem, six over x 
equals 21 over 31.5. Uh, I know some things about equations. I know there's these properties of equality saying that if I add or I subtract or I divide or I multiply or, or whatever I want to do, I can square both sides. Anything I want to do to one side of the equation, I can do to both sides of the equation, and I can keep it equal on both sides. So if I wanted to, say, not treat this as a proportion, but just treat it as a normal problem, what I would do uh, in approaching this would be multiply both sides by x. And when I multiply, I can cancel out the x's in that case and just be left with a 6. And on this right hand side, 21x over 31.5. The next thing that I would do would be, if I'm solving for x, now that I had x in the numerator, would be multiply both sides by 31.5. All right, and we know that that is 189 and that we have 21x. And as you can see, once we hit that step, it is literally what we had when we multiplied the cross product. So it's just almost like a shortcut, like a, we're just bypassing some of the algebra, some of the uh, um, arithmetic, um, at, because you do end up getting the same exact equation, uh, the same exact equation, um, either way you solve it, whether you use the cross product or whether you take your time and um, move x to the numerator and solve for x by itself. Okay, so well, let's just take a look at these last few examples and get a few more examples under our belt because there's a little bit more um, things like the distributive property going to be involved a little bit. Let's go ahead and use the cross product because we do know that that's going to be the most effective and simplest, shortest way to do these. I'm going to multiply the extremes 5 times x plus 3, and I'm going to set those equal to the means, 2 times 4x. And like I said, that's just a shortcut way of... Um, using inverse operations to cancel out division. 5x plus 15, make sure that when you multiply these guys, see this mistake a lot, we just, sometimes I see 5x plus 3 still. Uh, make sure we are distributing there. Um, I know there's not parentheses written on the paper, but you do need to write them in, because um, that 5 does need to be multiplied by both the x and the 3. And now it's just a matter of solving this equation. 15 equals 3x x must equal 5. I know we're pretty good at that. But do keep in mind that this 5, if you're taking it times this, these extremes are being multiplied, you do need to multiply the 5 by both parts and use the distributive property. Okay, same way here. Uh, the extremes will give me negative 6x. The means give me 44. If I divide by negative 6, um, and it, was, it looks like a fraction, it is a ratio. However you want to think of it, I can reduce 22 over 3. So x equals negative 22 over 3. Uh, you don't have to change it to a mixed number. Negative 22 over 3 is just fine. And once again, we're, we're using cross product. Now, this negative sign, actually, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna just, I can use it only once. I can use it either for the 4 or for the 7, not for both, one or the other. So I'm just going to move it to the top because that's just how I'm comfortable. I'm going to change, change. I'm going to say negative 4 times 2y plus 5. Equals 6 times 7. And so now I have this nice equation where I can solve it. My distributive property, remember to distribute the negative with the 4, negative 8y, negative times a positive, negative 20 equals 42. Okay, that's going to be important. This negative sign gets used once, either on the top or on the bottom. Distribute it to both parts at 20. And divide by negative 8 y equals negative 31 fourths. Okay, and like I said, you do not have to write it as a mixed number. That would not be a ratio, and that is what we're practicing. Um, so let's take a look at this last one here. The cross product. Oh, we got a double distributive property. We got a 7 times a z plus 4, and we got a 9 times a z minus 1. These are the mean, or sorry, these are the extremes. These are the means. And when we multiply them, Make sure that the 7 gets multiplied to both parts. Make sure that the 9 gets multiplied to both parts. Now, I know they didn't put parentheses on these, but if it helps you to remember to distribute, you may put parentheses on them. It doesn't change the value of anything, but it will make you your life easier to solve your equations. And now this is just the basic algebra steps that we've been practicing all year. And I'm going to solve for z. 
And so it looks like in this case, Z equals 37 halves. All right.